Hi, welcome back to my in-depth reviews of the Ty Lopez Business Accelerator Program. My name is Phil Smy, and I've just given the introduction backwards, so the graphics are going to be out of sync, but whatever. This, as I said, is my in-depth review of the Ty Lopez Business Accelerator Program. This is step number 17. This one is the Entrepreneur Brain Dump. Now this is a big one, so it might be a bit long, um, hopefully not as long as Ty's version, and uh, I'm going to do it without drawing on a whiteboard. So every once in a while you just need to either step back and look at the big picture or get what's in your head out onto a piece of paper or onto a video or something like that, because just saying it or writing it down really kind of gives you some clarity and what we're going to do is go through i think what are stay seven kind of stages of this um business how to work on your business idea and this is not just for the whole business this can be for a part of your business and it's just kind of a yeah a brain dump every once in a while you need a good brain dump so let's go through the seven stages. The first stage, you know, we have, it's, a, it's an idea, really. It's just kind of an inkling of a new business or a new product. We're gonna go through this kind of pretending we're doing a new business, let's say. And how do you pick something about this? You know, it's, it's maybe it's came into your brain because it was something you were curious about. You know, when you sit down there and you kind of dream about not the success of it, but dream of the product. You know, maybe you talk it out. Maybe you buy some books about it. Uh, Ty talks about going onto YouTube or reading Wikipedia, looking kind of at this idea you've got and the components that go into it. And write out, you know, some phrases or some ideas, the thing that got you going into it. And most importantly, after you'd spent a good day, really, or two brainstorming on it, sleep on it. You know, this is interesting because it also works this for the same kind of thing for writing. If you have an idea for a story, you do the same thing. And then what I suggest is put it in a drawer and forget about it for a couple of days. Ty says sleep on it. Same kind of thing. Give yourself a little bit of distance from it before you go back to it. Which, and you go back to stage two, which is creating the minimum viable product, the MVP. So start on it, you know, just kind of put together something that is the essence of your idea, you know, as fast as you possibly can and get it out to people who might be the early adopters, you know, and show that, show this idea to them, but most importantly, get their feedback. And then you kind of go into this loop of working on the MVP and kind of moving it up and going out maybe to a different set of early adopters, this kind of thing. And you get the feedback and you just go back and you back and back, back, back like that. And you do that for a little while until you pretty much the people who see it for the first time understand it. I'm now putting in my own stuff here, going off of what Ty said. Uh, put in, you know, people who see it for the first time understand it. People are uh, interested in it. The right, you know, the people you think should be interested in it are interested in it. And once you've got to that f phase, you can really go on to stage three, which is the beta. And the beta, it's different from the MVP in that it kind of goes out to a wider audience, goes out really to the world. People who can who look for it can find it, you know? And if, you're, if it's a product you're charging for, which I hope it is, um, you know, and maybe at this stage, you're charging very little, you know, just, I, there's a call, you know, some people say it should be free. I prefer not to be free if it's something that's going to be charged for in the end. Um, I mean, you can give a free trial, of course, but people should understand that this is something that will be paid for. And at this stage, stage three of the beta, you should set up your customer support. 
Most importantly, of course, is to get customer feedback. You always should be doing that. Make some modifications based on that customer feedback if you think it's valid and do some split testing. You know, say, well, if we had it like this or we had it like this, which one are people responding to? It can be a sales landing page, it could be the actual product itself or some features or some user interface. And you're not really doing any marketing at this point, you know? And you may be testing some marketing but you're not really giving it the big push because you're still in beta, you're still developing really this idea or this product or this business even. But you are building up a base and it's from this base that you can act, start to you know, request testimonials. And testimonials, as flaky marketing talk as it sounds, are still carry some weight, you know. Uh, if they're the right kind of testimonials and they're what they do is they address these concerns that people have so getting testimonials from real users is important and also it should be real verifiable users in my opinion because what i do when i go to something i'm interested in and i see testimonials first thing i do is go and see if i can find these people in the real world well twitter or whatever and if you can't find these people or if they're you know, people with a social media profile of zero or something like that, then you have to question if those testimonials are actually doing you help or doing you harm. So that's stage three of the beta. You know, stage four, that's when we get into advertising. Stage four really is just advertising. It's taking this beta and saying, okay, we're done with that beta phase. This is the real phase. Let's start advertising. And you go whole hog on the advertising. And then hopefully that advertising, excuse me, works for you. And you start getting a customer base in of real paying customers. And it's, it's at this point where that stage, I'm trivializing that stage because that stage may take a very long time to uh, advertising and getting in a solid base that gives you enough profit because remember we don't want to really seek investment until um, after that but it gives you enough of a profit or enough of an idea that this is a viable uh, product that you're working on that you can go into stage five which is the expansion you know and stage five is where you start you know getting people in to do customer support because maybe before it was just kind of the founders some marketing people and this kind of thing get customer support people in work on your staffing get up to 10 staff we're going to talk about that in a future uh, step i know and you know here's where maybe you get an office and here's where you set a routine you know that uh, every day at nine o'clock some status emails go out or this you know stuff that a real business does you know because if you get to stage five you're a real business congratulations you know and stage six is the one that we all dream about which is profit you know, and it's here, once you're in profit, you know, you've got your staff and, and uh, advertising and you're making a profit after all of that, that's when you get, you know, you make sure you've got your accountant in place, though I think you should do your accountant a bit earlier, you know, your accountant, bank office, bank accounts, you know, insurance, and, uh, you know, you know how you're splitting that money, you know, the reinvesting of that money, which I think is very important for companies to do at the beginning. You know, you understand about your taxes and, you know, maybe you get some investors in at this point and you have some C-level staff, you know, like uh, COOs and CTOs and these kinds of things, people, serious people who are pushing your business through expansion. I mean, I've whipped through this in whatever it is, five minutes, but by this phase, you know, we're serious you know we've got profit and we've got a lot of customers and we've got a real presence out there with this little idea that you started with and also at this stage this profit stage is where you start thinking about making yourself redundant really something that you don't have to you know go into the office every day you don't have to be hands-on with everything all the time because stage seven really is the act of removing yourself from your business you know and so you have to make sure you've got operations manuals in places, you have people you can delegate to, you can know how to incentivize people so that you feel comfortable um, that they're the ones handling the day-to-day -day of the business. And if it's a business where you've been the spokesman, maybe you find someone else who can be a spokesman. So you're no longer the public face. And this may be, step seven may be years and years down the line, but it's worth thinking about these are the steps you're gonna have to go through if you have 
when you have a successful business, not if, when you have a successful business. And you know, you've got your consultants, advisors, and you've got mentors, of course, and you've really figured out how to scale this business. And you have an exit strategy for yourself. Because what you want to do, I'm sure, if you're like me, you want to go back to the beginning, start thinking of a new business or product or, you know, facet of this business even, and work on that and start all over again. That is the exciting treadmill of entrepreneurship, you know. So, well, there you go. I hope you got something out of it. It was, it really was a brain dump, fast and powerful. And if you want to go back and review it, uh, I, I strongly suggest that. But you should remember these seven steps. You know, you got a new business, and then you go to an MVP, you go into beta, you go into advertising, you go into expansion, you go into profit, and you go into removing yourself. So there we go. And you can iterate, of course, over any of these phases, and these phrases can take years, some of them. So here's the three questions that Ty left us with. Question number one is, which of these stages do you do well at? Because, you know, sometimes you have an aptitude for creating an MVP or for, you know, setting up the accountants and things like this, but you don't have... Question number two, which, which is of, of these freight not phrases, which of these phases are you horrible at? Quite often it's the profit part, to be honest. People really fall down when they go from kind of small business to bigger business, serious business. It's true. And question number three is, do a mini brain dump of the most successful thing you've ever done. Did you go through these kind of seven steps as well? You know, or how did it work for you? Because maybe your seven steps are slightly different. Anyway, that's it. Gosh, step number 13, big one. But we'll see you very soon for step number 14. I'm Phil Smy, and this is my in-depth review of the Ty Lopez Business Accelerator Program. See you soon.